and gentlemen and non-binary folks, thanks so much for stopping by. We are so excited to have you here. My name is Jinxie Cat, and with me is the love of my life. It's Tesher. How are ya? It's me. I'm alive and alive. How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a lovely time. I hope you are as excited as I am for the games tonight. Yeah, it's going to be really fun. We have Team Rainbow Strike Go versus Blood, Bath, and Beyond. I'm going to let them know that we are ready to go, and then we'll talk all about these maps. Thanks so much, everybody, for stopping by. I hope you're excited for some very exciting Sea West games. I'm going to take you over to the map so you can see where we're going, where we cannot go, and where we hope to go. I did not update where we're going for game number one. It is Brax's holdout. This was picked by Bloodbath and Beyond. As you can see there, we have a nice little chunky corner in the side of <laughs> every place we can hope to go. It looks like it actually needs to be updated a little bit there from my Storm Division games the other night. So whoopsie. It's um, very aesthetically pleasing. Seeing I know. that entire corner just eight and completely wiped out by the teams but the order went as such with blood bath and beyond banning out garden of terror boe was banned out by team rainbow strike go dragonshire was blood bath and beyond second ban and alterac being the final ban from tsrg gonna be a really fun series now the big thing is is punk rock pirate gonna get to play that chromie they love to go to these two lane <laughs> maps last season they absolutely dominated sea west on hanamura temple they love to go uh to these like i said the, the two lane maps and run it down especially with that chromie that sound means we are ready for the draft so while we speculate why don't we go ahead and head over that way we are already heading in with the first pick and first ban going over to TSRG. And you already mentioned that Chromie that is very potentially scary for either of these teams. But we also have two very high priority picks for the side of Team Rainbow Strike Go, where they have prioritized D.Va in the majority of the games they've played so far, along with that Chromie. Close behind them, though, Diablo, the new and improved Falstad with a 100% win rate. Ooh. Lee Ming, Muradin, and Stukov are also quite high up there. Right out the gate, Rainbow Strike is going to get rid of that Chromie. They know how devastating <laughs> it can be. They do not want to deal with it. So get her out of here. Makes sense. It's still such a strong hero. And it has been played only once by the looks of it by Bloodbath and Beyond. But it's still so strong to get rid of. A 100% win rate for Bloodbath and Beyond. So it's a very sensible removal here. Rex are going to be taken out, removing those dominant top laners. Another thing that has been shown already by Team Rainbow Strike Ghost that the teams have done research on each other. It's so important to scout your enemy, see what they're going to pick, so you don't end up getting blown away by something goofy. Right now, it seems to be just fairly standard going through so far. Hogger is still around. Uh, May going to be our final band of the evening. So, what is Team Rainbow Strike going to pick up first here? Fall sad, it looks like. Already talked about it. Over two games, they have a 100% win rate. He's one of the newest changed heroes, so he's going to be prioritized. The Anduin and the Garrosh are the two highest picked heroes for the side of Blood, Bath, and Beyond. They have the Garrosh for the Blood and the Beyond, and Anduin for the Beyond. But where is the Bath? Leo, not too highly picked for them. In fact, has not been shown so far this season, so no dirty bathtub. Maybe they'll pull it out this time around. I would love to have the bath uh, join in <laughs> on the con. But you called it. Polite Gamer are going to be on that Garrosh. So they can look for that Wombo combo there. Murden going to be picked up here for Silver. And I think it's a solid pickup into Garrosh. Anytime he tries to throw you away, you can just jump out and say, nope. Absolutely. We're seeing all the greatest hits so far for uh, Team Rainbow Strike go outside of that Chromie. Out of three of the heroes they have picked so far, all three of them have a 100% win rate with two wins on Falstad and Muradin. One win on that Kael'thas. So they're either about to pad some stats or they are about to lose some numbers. In terms of where the team's position, Team Rainbow Strike, in theory, have the advantage with a single point lead over Blood, Bath, and Beyond over the same amount of games due to a single extra domination. Uh, sorry, three dominations from TSRG. And Blood Bath and Beyond only having one domination over four games. It's been a tough time, but nothing they can't pull out here. 
So, uh, both of them, you know, fighting tooth and nail to get uh, jockey for position uh, in the season. I'm taking a look here now. And it's the number three in Team, or Team Rainbow Strike Go versus the number five in Blood, Bath, and Beyond. But as you said, only one point. So, if Blood, Bath, and Beyond win the series, they will actually have two points and jump up to third place, pushing Team Rainbow Strike Go into fourth place. Now, if there's a domination tonight, then Team Rainbow Strike Go will take first, beating out Clouded Minds after Dark and Cool Cats and Kittens. <laughs> Very true, and Gaslow Tassadar coming in here. Big wombo potential. There's so many wombos <laughs> available for the side of Bloodbath and Beyond. There's also the possibility, by the way, if Bloodbath and Beyond do score a domination here. Also, they are currently tied fourth and fifth. If they score a domination here, they will tie for first with Chicago Mines After Dark and Cool Cats and Kittens. So a domination for either of these teams puts them in first or tied first position. So it's a big deal for them. And Team Rainbow Strike Go, they just have to win to tie first. Yeah, definitely. So, have to see how they're going to do tonight as they round out their draft with Malthael and Lucio. That's going to be a little bit rough for Garrosh, I think. Malthael's percentage damage auto attacks do not care about his armor, and Lucio is so <laughs> infuriating to play against just because uh, if you're a Garrosh, your form of engage is running at them. And if you cannot do that, then you have no engage, which can be really tricky. Very true indeed. It's the first Gaslo showing, by the way, for Blood, Bath, and Beyond. And that can have an okay lane into Malthael, but Malthael, if he gets onto Gaslo, can give him a really miserable time. We may have to see Wraithling playing maybe more of a mage build a little bit further back, or heavily abusing the uh, mercenaries if Malthael is able to take them. As Malthael, yet another 100% win rate hero so far. Right now, Blood, uh, Team Rainbow Strike, go are putting all of their bets on basically everything except for Lucio. So far, everything they have played, they haven't lost with except for Lucio, where they've only played it once and have yet to win with it. So this is really going to affect their stats <laughs> in terms of potentially getting an advantage for their opponents. Because if they win this, if they win this map, then their statistics are incredibly skewed, which is going to make it very hard for anyone to ban, because suddenly they have four 100% win rate heroes all of which with over two or three games, which is going to make it so hard for opponents to ban them in the future. Yeah, definitely going to be a huge upside if they lose, though. Losing all those 100s can feel I so know. bad. <laughs> we haven't lost on this. And you're like, you know what? Well, we've only lost once on this. It's hard here because it looks like both teams got everything they wanted. Uh, no team really uh, trying to take out any of those hard hitters. As you can see, so many 100% win rates here as we uh, hop on in, but at the same time, you know, it really comes down to a Team Rainbow Strike goes draft versus the map pick that the members of uh, Bloodbath and Beyond love so much. We'll have to see how it goes as we get into it. But over here on the left-hand side, we have Bloodbath and Beyond with Rackham on that and a win. Punk Rock Pirate is going to be your Tassadar. Oh, Wraithling on the Gazlo. Polite Gamer is your Garrosh. And Souza will be your Sylvanas. Whereas on the right-hand side, it will be Kingle playing on that mouth ale. We're going to have Silver on the Muradin down in the bottom of the map. Robert demounted themselves, unfortunately, on that Kale fast. Oh, no. It is going to be Sticks on the Falstad. Is back up and going. And finally, we have Silver. I said Silver on that Muradin. Who knows? It was Panda on the Lucio. For sure. As we come down here, I have to just point out... <laughs> Because I, I, I think it's funny. Um, oh, she was that odd uh, animal. Raccoon has been a little bit naughty. Oh, what? Oh, oh yeah, I see we're, it. We're, we're naughty today. <laughs> Had a couple of rough storm games, it looks like. But, you know, that's all right. We're going to get in here. Lots of damage coming out. Big throw on to Robert, who is going to be first blood. Luckily for them, they've opted. They're going to see two kills out as Murden is going to go as well. Panda might be in the same position. There it is. Make it three. A devastating first play here. We're trading out just Sylvanas. So we'll D value that push power just a little bit but still a big lead going over to bloodbath and beyond 
very nicely done. They get the three for one, get a huge pick up there. Good barrel roll by Sticks to avoid Polite Gamer, but making heavy, heavy use of this early Sylvanas level one, that might of the Banshee Queen. The highest single target burst on a level one. The percentage damage is great for sustained fights with that overwhelming affliction. But might of the Banshee Queen for a single target burst from level one, you can't get a huge amount better than that for Sylvanas talents. And as such, they were able to turn that into two kills very early on and grab one on the way out for any Sylvanas for it. Like Gamer is trying to attack Souls are not there for them. So they're just going to back up and let this go over for a bit. They will have to give up that point for the time being. They're picking up a camp though, so that will push. Like Gamer taking quite a bit of damage, going to be hit by that flame strike uh, while coming in, trying to zone out the members of Team Rainbow Strike there. Like Gamer continuously just being pulled, pummeled away by Robert on that Kale Foss. But they're just gonna try and clear. We do have 62% going over to the side of Team Rainbow Strike. Another throw onto Sticks. They are gonna be able to use the barrel roll away. Out comes the electric fence. Susa jumping in is not going to be a kill yet. Foul set just too slippery. It's a full pick style coming in for Blood and Bath and Beyond here going with that electric fence, like you said, and that holy reach for the loot for the Anduin here. Getting that increased root duration on Chastise. They're really just trying to pick people off one by one, isolate and destroy exactly like that. Grabbing Muradin, already using his jump, picking up the kill. In the meantime, Gaslock zoned out in the top plane is losing the fight it's gonna start getting better as he's taken that rocket socket here but kingle using that advantage is gonna grab themselves a merc camp and kingle with Hell this yeah. build from gaslo is it gonna have the worst time in the world it's just to make sure he's fighting in minion waves but that or it won't always be possible with that top objective is working out well for Team Rainbow Strike up in the top lane because they are not doing well down here in the bot. Susa will have to back away, spreads the bomb over to Rackham, who doesn't have any mana, so we'll have to be careful. And while they're fighting down there, let's take a look at the coolest and most attractive players on the team. These are our off laners. They sacrifice that screen time so we can have XP. And it looks like Kingle is laying it on thick. Moving back down here to the bottom, though, seeing as Rackham had to back up, not having any mana, this will once again go over to Team Rainbow Strike Go. We're very close to finishing that beacon. However, they have sent the team up to contest Kangol. Rackham a little bit late to the party. Polite Gamer getting a nice fistful of those percentage autos from Kangol. He's now just going to jump back on this point. How long, though, as three members continuously try to contest them? It's 94 to zero currently on the point. How long can they keep this going? Because in the meantime, the four man pushes bot lane very hard. Souza failing to dodge the flame strike there. Teats a lot of damage. Down into close, Punk Pirate will back up and avoid that living bomb. But the fact is, the second they back up, Kingo will be able to make his way onto the point. And he's fighting Rayfling here. If he can keep on the Ooh. point, fighting in those turrets, he can get it. But Polite Gamer finds the kill exactly when they need it. As Sticks arrived for reinforcements. Six will be able to get the soak for the time being. We're still sitting at 94%. Leaving Garros up there, the main engage for Bloodbath and Beyond, though, did allow for a lot of damage to be dealt over to the side of Bloodbath and Beyond. They are going to get the objective back for at least the moment. You can see they are starting to channel slowly up in the top now. Wraithling is being harassed by Panda, and Styx may look to go down there. Boop, oh not my gonna God. find him. Oh no. Oh, anti tours. Black Arrows has been burned. Kingle came down for bot lane to try and help out. Black Arrows was used. We'll get one more disable onto this fort. Robert's forced to back up. And this fort will be dropped. And this will prevent the objective from going over to the side of TSRG, at least for now. Pug Pirate cannot stay and fight this. Kingle is currently 1v4ing. Will be able to survive and saves the fort. Unbelievable. Absolute mad lad. If I had that much health, the first thing I would do it was not run in to four <laughs> members of the enemy, but was able to make that risky play, save the team there. Members of Triple B, though, biting back are at 88%. Now, neither Zerg Wave is going to be something you just want to let push. Wraithling will end up going down here. Two kills over on the side of Team Rainbow Strike Go to the six of Bloodbath and beyond. 
ever going to have a little bit of a hard time continuing to push in here. Bottom fort will be the first fort to go down. Now the team is just backing up, trying to clear out. In terms of wave clear, I think both teams are probably pretty equal. You can see both of their waves going down fast. We did have a little bit less on the side of Bloodbath and beyond. So Team Member Strike Go are able to clear that up fairly quickly. And not a whole lot coming from these early Zerg waves, Tetcher. Everyone's able to clear very effectively. Like you said, both teams are solid wave clear. Difference is we can see Bloodbath and Beyond a little bit further out in the lane. They got the advantage earlier, able to try and set that up. Raveling starting the turret wall. Being set up exactly what this build is built for, spamming as many turrets as possible. Not so great when you're against a Mouth Ale who heals off them and is killing you with die alone, which is why we have seen so many times people come up to help out Gaslow, but fantastic when you are working to defend against multiple heroes. Exactly what they're trying to do here. Rayflake pushes forward. Silver on the backside. Gets a huge drop and takes out Garrosh. We're going to continue to chase in onto Wraithling, who's trying to drop those turrets, get those shields to get away. Great use of that Explodium charge. Will stun out Kingle, and the team is just going to back away for now. They did end up grabbing that Siege Camp, so we'll continue to look pushing in this way. We should see a lane swap coming out here from the teams as Kingle is going to head bottom. The rest of them, again, just pushing up here in the top lane. Level 10s are on the line here with Light Bomb and the Black Hole taken so far. <laughs> Gaslow could very easily build into the Robo Goblin here, which would actually give him a pretty reasonable matchup versus Mouth Ale in a 1v1 if he chose to. But look at this. There's Warlord's Challenge, there's Black Hole, there's Light Bomb. I, I couldn't resist. I would not be able to resist this, even if Robo Goblin might be a little bit of a better choice into the Muradin, at least of the Kael'thas as well. But look at it, it's so tempting, you gotta do it. It. It's got to be graphic. Look at this combo. You can, he, oh my god, he, he has so much more self control than I do. He goes to the Robo Goblin. This will give him such an easier lane into that mouth there with the extra damage output, and that cleanse will help. Cast into the black hole. They just turn on them from behind. Wailing arrow and the light bomb. And Tears are being eaten, but they are still alive. They're turning this round. Rackham's taken out. King Gill escapes, Jinxie. King Al going back in with only 173 health. We'll find the final kill onto that Garrosh, the help of Kael'thas. What a turn of events there. The Gust was good. The Black Hole was fantastic. The Light Bomb was absolutely absurd with the constant healing and the great patience from Panda on that Lucio going for the shield there on that sound barrier. The last possible second keeping everybody alive and really turning it in favor of the members of Team Rainbow Strike Go. Well played. The targeting not being dropped. So many low members on TSRG, but the turnaround was there because they lived. They got that Lucio. They got that Mouth Ale last rights. They were able to take that fight in their favor. That was huge, but again, Double channel. Gaslow now with Robo Goblin absolutely dunks on Malfail. <laughs> Falsad coming in to try and help out, and that will kill Rayfling, but he might get Kingle on the way out. Turret's taking fire, but it will not be enough to get the kill. So I've heard of the famous Kingle Malfail. Kale Foss is going to be traded out here. Black Hole was used as well, but Sylvanas turning off that front fort is just going to keep on pushing them back. But uh, this is really something, going back to Malfael, this is something, you know, you typically don't see every day. Consistently going in with quarter health, you know, uh, three quarters health, it doesn't matter. And finding those kills, granted there was a lot of help from Falstead there, but absolutely no fear. And it's really paying dividends for the side of Team Rainbow Strike Go. That's right, we'll we'll finish off the light gamer. Pulled out, still got the last rights, no way out. Punk Pirate is isolated completely. Boss is aggroed but leashed, and that leaves Rackham to retreat all the way out. Wraithling, who was on their way to help out, will not make it in time. And the momentum of this game has kind of shifted. Boss is being taken. We are seeing TSRG taking full control here with over half a level lead. Nobody's going to be able to step in and contest. They're just going to claim it, regardless of had the members of Bloodbath and Beyond try to step up. They still do have that gust. They're going to look to potentially use it there, but they end up just backing away. Light Wailing Arrow will come out. Once again, Light Bomb is going to connect onto Silver, breaking down that jump there from the Dwarf Toss. Out going to come that Gravo 
as, or excuse me, that Avatar Wraithling will go down thanks to the Pyro Blast. Punk Rock Pirate is back, drops the black hole, but everyone is able, oh, except for Kingo who walks into it, <laughs> is able to scurry to safety. I love people, but I hate, I hate people, but I love gatherings. <laughs> I can't talk. I'm very excited about this match. There's a lot happening. Sorry, I'm the scoops. other one of those. It's what you were going to say originally. <laughs> <laughs> I hate people, but I love gatherings. Sergeant Scoops, thank you for the rating party of 10. Welcome, members of Sergeant Scoops community. We are in game number one of our best of three series, and TSRG are getting a firm hold on this middle game here. They have a big advantage, a full level lead now. Mercab's being traded out one for one. So far, the objective's neutralized. TSRG Kingle has managed to re-grab control of top lane. Also, nice use of this boom box to... Sorry to keep Malthael healed up when he is in the solo lane. He just brought back in and get heals. The zoning coming out. Full 5v5. Robert. Good damage onto Punch Pirate. Masuza diving the backline. And continue to just skirmish it out a little bit. Black Hole will come out. Light Bomb going to connect onto Malthael. Great use of the gust, though. Unstoppable from Malthael's own kit. Nearly steps back into the Explodium. Out comes the Sound Barrier. Last Rites will find the way onto Rackham, but does not end up killing him. And Kingle still escaping in the back. Sylvanas will be traded out for Robear there. Kingle is still alive! I thought for sure they were going to their death, finally. The <laughs> god does bleed. The Malthael will go down. They're going to trade Wraithling out here. Rackham very low. Silver is still looking for blood, but it is a 3v3. Silver is low. It's going to get stunned by Polite Gamer, but the Dwarf Tops will jump them away to safety. And a very successful victory for the side of uh, uh, Bloodbath and beyond there. They'll claim control over that bottom lane at 98%. They hold it. 98 to 32. Somebody's to head top. Rackham is going to pour back. They're not going to get anyone there in the near future. Souza will head back and clear out this bottom lane, trying to gain some control with such that quick wave clear of that unstable poison. This is outnumbered. They're going at this in just a 2v1 to try and get the kill, but the rest of the team is on the way. Tassadar, the throw black hole. That's insane. Punch Pirate back it up. Will die to the last right. No, he survives. A Souza dies in for Kingle. We're going to drop the light bomb. They find Kingle. Great use of the unstoppable, but he's very, very low. Tries to dive back in. Break it down. Going to come out a little bit too late. And the members of Team Rainbow Strike Go do have to back up there. Bloodbath and Beyond finding their stride. They have both of these forts. They're going to look to take this camp here still. Without mouth, they out. It is going to be very difficult to step back up. So let's just wait by their time and look to clear. Top lane was cleared out, and now once again, it's Bloodbath and Beyond looking to take full control of the map. That trap by Punk Pirate and Polite Gamer early on was so brave, considering that they have a Psy Infusion Tassadar. They don't have the extra burst to try and make a play like that, but they still went through it, and they did turn it into a kill, as this is a flag and a half. Looking for Robert, they know he is most damaged. Good guff to try and protect Robert, but Black Hole catches him in. But it's more of a disengage, as Polite Gamer is in trouble. Rackham doing their best. Light Bomb is cleansed, and Polite Gamer finds very low. Souza in the back will be the first to go down. They're going to pull Tassadar, but only bringing the bomb to the team. Rackham blasted before the Pyro will connect. And in an astonishing turn of events, TSRG are going to be the ones to take the three for nothing. There's a big buildup in the bottom lane. They're going to send Robert to deal with it. Kingle is Wraithling getting started on that camp. They better be careful. They don't know. They don't know that Wraithling's on it. They just leave. The minimap does show them that this is happening, and Silver has finally realized a little bit of a slow reaction, but he makes it over the wall. Big stun, and that is going to be one very dead Wraithling, as that is the cab stolen away as well. I mean, this bottom fort will likely die, but they do still have to deal with bot lane. It's two Ultralists and two Guardians, which do still do a lot of damage. A 60% wave is absolutely no joke and will end the game if left unattended. However, the members of Bloodbath and Beyond have their own hands full as these Zerg are getting stronger and stronger and harder to clear out. That top camp was just munched through. They're looking at the keep now, trying to see if they can't get on top of that. But Sylvanas jumping in, that Windrunner coming out at level 13. They finally find their 16, so we'll be able to fight again. And only losing that keep front wall. About an even trade there in terms of Zerg 
for both the teams. However, sealing out that fort in the bottom is going to lead this to tidy up the map and sort of tie the teams together for the side of Team Rainbow Strike Go. Now they have that uh, strong team fight. It's going to be really difficult to find the upper hand on once again. Raveling checking bushes very sensibly, trying to avoid a gank. Has gone all in on the Gaslo auto attack build with overclock and positive reinforcements on level 16 and 13, respectively, with attack speed and percentage damage auto attacks. 2.5%. Meridian's going to have a rough time, but Raveling loses out so much poke and crowd control going this build. It is a hyper commitment to the melee assassin backline murdering or even front like killing style of Gasla. Right now, the teams are just looking to posture here. Whoever loses this team site is going to be in a dire position on the map. Because they're just trying to clear out the Gazlo turrets. Lucio Boombox is basically a standalone ward, similar to that one, you know, like League of Legends. So uh, nobody's clearing it, finally. They're going to... Oh, oh. Huh? <laughs> what? Why are you like this, Boombox? He's so happy. He knows he's he knows he's lucky. It's like me, <laughs> dead on the inside, but still. <laughs> Hang on. Uh, wait, I'm not gonna select it because it'll mess up the overlay. I don't know how many hit points that thing has. The answer is probably not many. Uh, it is six. It's gonna be pushed now. Six. Oh, wonderful. Oh, there finally they take care of it. Goodbye, Boombox. <laughs> <laughs> you will be missed. You will be missed. We shall dance at your wake. <laughs> Until you are placed again, in which case you are fine. There he is. Welcome back. <laughs> Top's going to be cleaned out. Dealing with the last remaining mercenary camp on the map outside of this boss. Everything else has been taken, but a respawn on this bruiser camp will send the Goliaths and the Raven down into that bottom lane. Everybody just looking to push for right now as I accidentally highlight Kalthos. We definitely don't want that, so excuse me, team. Uh, <laughs> he's a handsome lad, but we want to see all the members of the uh, heroes in the game right now, all the members of the teams. So backing out once again, it's all just posturing for these teams currently. Bottom is pushing. Black Hole is going to come out. A little bit of damage with that ignite at level 13 there for Kale Thos. Light Bomb will come out as well as Taunt. Connecting on to three members. Great gust though. They find the stun onto Silver who pops the avatar. Now the teams are in full-blown combat. Kingle looking for Polite Gamer who has been isolated. Rackham is going to be able to get back to them with a couple of heals. And now they're just trying to disengage on the side of the blue team. Continuing to poke out just a little bit. But Kangol has already made their way up to the top. They're going to grab this top uh, a shrine here, and that will start the channel for the Zerg once again. So the seas, there's Black Gamer going to run in. There's the stun. Rayfling diving deep. Remember, percentage damage auto attacks. Rayfling going right in for this. Wants to take out Silver. Big unstoppable as we use on Polite Gamer, who is going to focus down but with that armor. Might be enough to keep him alive, but in the meantime, Sousa gets the triple kill on the back line, the front line, abandoning their assassins, leaving nothing left as Kingle is chased down. Styx has to face the 1v1 of Sousa. Gets the barrel roll out. Kingle draw the juke but is in serious trouble very outnumbered very outgunned and kingle will be taken out close they had that last right maybe unfortunately for the side of tsrg the members of bloodbath and beyond saw that kingle was top knew they had the fourth v5 and were 100 percent ready to take advantage of it and take advantage they did malveil has returned as level 20 has been hit by the side of TSRG. Channel will go over to Bloodbath and Beyond for the time now, and Boss will be picked up, but this time for the side of our blue friends here. Go on, dodge those missiles, they've really hurt. You can see Suzo is currently out of mana, out of health, and out of time. We'll need to pull after this. <laughs> This will prevent the objective. This gives a little bit of time for TSRG. You can see Styx was thinking about it. He did have Gust, but that would have been a very, very risky play. Instead, they started the Siege Camp. They don't really believe they can take a contested fight on that top point. But what they can do is buy time until everyone is there. And then think about it. Variant's Legacy for the Adam with that extra damage. The throw only hits a Mercenary. 
Vega unstoppable coming out last right and that light bomb, but it's going to be Polite Gamer who is the first to go down. Big team fight all around. We have the wind tunnel level 20 fight. Members of Bloodbath and Beyond are falling, but Kingo will die. Susan going to be the next to be traded out. Wraithling not far behind. They did manage to get that Zerg wave, and that is a huge defense that needs to happen on the top side. This could still end the game. Uh, Bloodbath and Beyond could definitely win with this right here, Tetra. The boss is low. Everybody is porting back. The Zerg wave is slow to get there, but we'll get there nonetheless. At minimum, I would be surprised if this keep is still standing. They have a Kale Fast, they have a False Dad, but they will not have a Keep, like you said. The odds of them keeping us alive are insane. Silver taking the brave strategy to tank the Bailix. Remember, these do percentage damage, forcing Silver to back up after getting chucked. He's already burned stone form in the fight and uses the Fountain before it dies. But this fort, this Keep, will 100% go down here. There's no way to keep that alive, but they will save the game. In the bot lane, they are clearing up. It's Tasto with a huge amount of AoE and Rackham, who is there. <laughs> they can throw the Divine Star. They get it. Just about this Varian's Legacy. Yep, the, the Varian's Legacy does work on non heroes, so they are doing some damage. <laughs> Overall, going to be another successful trade for Bloodbath and Beyond, who managed to pick it up before the keep goes down. But. TSRG were able to hang on and are still in the game. It's going to be a very difficult fight anytime they look to try and contest up here in the top lane now, but still not an unwinnable game. They're having a hard time on this map despite consistently winning these team fights. 15 to 20 in favor of TSRG for the kills here. We'll take a look at the damage. Lucio healing like an absolute mad lad. Anduin pretty close as well, though. And lots of big damage coming out just from everybody. 63K for Suza on that Sylvanas. Excuse me, 70K for Suza on the Sylvanas and 63 for Kingle on the mouth ale. Who has been having a lovely time in the back line and the solo lane doing a lot of damage. Speaking of a lot of damage, the Sylvanas has gone for full backline murder build. This is a very old fashioned build and it's actually the one that became the most popular after Sylvanas' rework, where you dive the backline with festering wounds, get kills using the spell power boost and just unloading your full uh, withering fire into your opponents, getting maximum crit and spell power damage, and then rolling out with the same Windrunner from level 13. So it was a May have made a mistake here as Wind Tunnel comes onto the back line. Black Hole hits absolutely nothing, but Light Bomb gets three members and South Barrier comes out. Members of TSRG still very low. Kingo looking for Punk Rock Pirate. They're going to find the last right onto him there. Polite Gamer very low in the back. Kingo is full of poison. That is Polite Gamer staying alive for the moment, but Souza being traded out there. Rackham going to be the next to go down. Polite Gamer after that. Sticks though will also fall in this team fight. They're looking for Silver. Great stun. Pyroblast will secure the kill. It's all five members of Bloodbath and Beyond have been wiped out. Traded Six, who will fly back in with that uh, epic, or that, excuse me, not epic mount, but the uh, Falstead Fly, I can't remember for the life of me what the name of uh, their mount is called. I think it's just called Take Flight. I think you might be right, that sounds right. So he'll be back in a little bit. We are gonna see this keep in the bottom go down here. And the, the greed from Sousa, the team stepping back. You know, they, they had the Will of the Forsaken, they had the double wind runner, runner but coming in with the uh, gust in the back, it just wasn't enough. The whole team was pushed back into fight. Unstoppable was used. Nobody cared about Sousa. They just got the team very, very low, then came back in and cleaned up. Step their way onto this boss. This will push bottom lane. The opposite lane to their Zerg, but it's still core damage. This TSRG setting themselves up as best they can. They gotta be careful with Silver, taking a lot of damage. Of course, it is Ooh. Brodin. He will regen after this. Boss that arrives just in case there was an invade. The attempt was gonna be made. As they move on to the point, 90%. They will be able to interrupt this in time, but no, he's no. not a polite game and loses them the point. There's the gust. Here comes the self cleanse from Malfail into the back line to try and take out Punk Fire. Last Rise gets the first kill in this fight. Kingo looking for the back. Suza running as fast as they can. They have that win runner. They don't follow that haunting wave through, though. We'll go down two sticks, and I think we're looking at the beginning of the end here, Tetcher. Was a devastating play trying to come in there, but there's there are catapults on the core. Polite Gamer is going for it. 
He's going for it. He's going to try it in the game with the catapults. Core down to 90%, 80%. The minion spawn. There's a single catapult here, which will help out. Polite Gamer has to deal with this catapult. Throws it, stuns it, resets. But Kingle will save the game for their team, leaving just poor Wraithling to defend, meaning that will be GG. Oh Kingle my god, look at how fast the core is going. <laughs> so much. Boss got a full 100% Zerg rip a -roni. Oh, goodness. <laughs> wow. It's wow. Ending. They maybe could have got that. If Kegel had not gone back there, that would straight up a big game over. They they did pay attention. You can't leave three catapults alone. That was still a smart move by Polite Gamer. I honestly think Wraithling should have tried to sneak past and go with them. You can't defend that. There's no chance. All you can really do is run and hope. I mean, it was 40% down before Kingo even got back there. Gazla with the turrets maybe would have made the difference. Still, it's really hard to call there. You know, your whole team is dead. How are you going to yeah. come back in and get this? The <laughs> boss is there. The, the, Zerg, the boss wasn't there, actually, but, you know, the boss <laughs> was on his way. The Zerg wave was coming. I mean, you, you had to make something crazy happen. And it was super crazy. Look at these kills, 16 to 29 in favor of Team Rainbow Strike Go. There, we'll take a look at the talents. But my goodness, Tetcher, like my, my heart <laughs> is just thumping out of my chest. It's just the great plays we've seen from both the teams. I don't think we've seen a an even match of this caliber in a very long time. Could not agree more. That game was absolutely intense. And what it really came down to was the fact that even with that absolutely insane wombo that we did see from the side of Bloodbath and Beyond, they didn't actually have enough damage to finish anyone off. We saw so many times where they would get big wombos in the fights, and then it was either shot calling targeting or just people not being in position or just the fact that they couldn't really get to people. But all they really had was Sousa whose main objective seemed to be diving the back line to try and kill people while the front line kept people locked down, which was very successful, might I add. But that left Pug Pirate with the AoE Tassadar build, which wasn't enough to finish off the Muradin, to finish off the Lucio. And Falstad was just in their back line, bullying Tassadar out, so they just didn't have the tools to finish those fights. They could absolutely start them and do amazingly, but they could never actually fully execute outside of the times where they caught the members of TSRG out and were able to get Sousa onto that backline to just wombo everyone with the with the uh, backline assassin combo. It was a great pincering from TSRG, that's for sure. Sticks constantly coming in, Kingle coming in from an angle and just crushing him, as you mentioned. Suza did an absolutely fantastic job. We look here at the score screen, nine kills. Nine of the 16 kills going over to Suza there. You know, Punk Pirate, Punk Rock Pirate getting the uh, uh, another good chunk of them with four there and then 10 assists. Definitely laying down the damage. But as you said, you know, there wasn't really anybody to pressure Lucio. So whenever anybody got low, they could just drop the sound barrier. And from then on, it was just, you know, it either waited out, which most of the time they really didn't have the time, especially with that uh, last rites with the Falstad gust pushing people away with the pyroblast. You know, I'm wondering if maybe this wouldn't have been a salvation game. There aren't a whole lot of things. It's, it's Kale Foss and Murin and, and then a gust from Falstad. And I guess maybe a Lucio boop. So if you're back in the back, you go Salvation, maybe that was the play. I mean, I'm not 100% sure. I'm just speculating here. But lots of bursts. Very difficult for Rackham there. So much. I really find it interesting as well that Wraithling, for starters, I'm sure it still was very tempting to go for that Gravro Bomb. And maybe that could have helped them. But the fact is, Wraithling could have 1v1'd anyone on that team. With the build they went and the way they were playing, and even in that last fight where they were 1v4, they tanked. They lived a really long time, and they were about to kill Malthael. If the rest of the team hadn't been there, could have killed Malthael. And if Malthael can't 1v1 you, who can? Their only chance of killing Wraithling, if, Ma if Malthael had gone down, would have been Falstad kiting. That would have been their chance. So the fact that they were able to turn those fights very effectively was really fun to see. But it was still, the fact is, that was still a scary gas, so I just can't help but feel that the commitment to a build that it gives you the unstoppable, yes, but requires you to get melee mode with a mouth on the enemy team and your other frontline being Garrosh is a potential risk. 
high risk, high reward. Didn't end up paying off this time around, but I'm so excited for game number two. I wouldn't be surprised if this goes to a three game series because what a game. I'm, I'm, I just, I can't, I, I <laughs> it's so hard to find the words to describe other than, you know, like, oh, <laughs> oh shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that they, they they've done a fantastic job and I'm, I'm we're just waiting for our second game here uh thank you guys for the copy pasta i absolutely adore that hello team i hope you guys are having a good night and i hope you're, you're having as much <laughs> oh dear All right as Trixie said we're just waiting for a lobby to materialize and then we'll be able to jump on in and get us underway with our second game of the series this is a best of three remember in c west winner of this will no matter what now tie first place mm -hmm. unless it is tsrg to finish off the win in a 2-0 in which case they will take first place but no matter what the winner of this will be in the top spot all righty and i brought it back to us because every time i bring it back to us I mean. we have to swat screens again <laughs> that's just always how it's been so uh we're gonna go ahead and head on back to our score screen Ooh. because we have our second game ready to go and it's gonna be cursed hollow nice honestly still i i know a lot of people have gone off cursed hollow recently but it's still one of my favorite maps. I like the mix of macro and objective play that can be mixed in with very heavy team fights. The fact it has two bosses gives way to heavy macro to heavy macro play or trying to just grab an advantage. It gives you a counter play for if your opponents start to get ahead, which can deny snowballing. And it still has the opportunity to take big team fights over objectives or by diving the bosses. Some of the best boss fights have been on Cursed Hollow. That or Tumor the Spider Queen, which still has the best boss pit of all time. But it's still honestly one of my favorite maps. It has one of the most perfect balances of micro, <laughs> macro, and objective, in my opinion, of any map. Definitely. We'll have to see how they're going to bring it out this time because we've seen Curse Hollow played so many ways. It is the longest happening map. It was the very first map when you had to be invited to play Heroes of the Storm. So a <laughs> lot of folks have been, you know, theory crafting here. And we see uh, Snag is upset that we haven't mentioned the copy pasta. I feel what like we've mentioned it? it twice now. Do you want me to we read it? it once. Do you we want definitely me to read it? I mean, once. I, 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 all right. Is that the Jinxica, the Easily Tilted, and Tetcher, the Weary, the lead singer and Larry. backup vocals? Weary, you, you know what? Shut up. How about? You ruined it. Now I got to start <laughs> over. Is that the Jinxica, the Easily Tilted, and Tetcher, the Weary, lead singer and backup vocals for Beat Gen, 40 Seconds to Feed, the assistant to the head caster and the fabulous caster of HTC, Queen of the Five Person Mosh, and the great Kermit impersonator? All right, hopefully you heard that one, Snag. <laughs> My achievements on there are better than yours. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, she can land a game-winning mosh pit, but I can talk like a Muppet. <laughs> well, excuse me. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, I, I would argue a superior you. skill. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, Yeah. Oh, you you want to go there? You want well then. In that case, my casting achievements are better because my job still exists. Except I'm doing the same thing as you. You're not the head caster. You're not the oh, assistant yeah, head no, caster. That's fair. that's fair. Yeah, your your job still exists. Yeah, it does. You know what? I'm getting paid exactly zero dollars. So why don't you let that sink in? Exact same as me right now. So <laughs> hell yeah, still it's still a win. <laughs> Difference is, I'm being paid zero dollars to not have a job, and you're being paid zero dollars to assist someone else's job. We got it. I can uh, assist you to finding a new place to cast Heroes of the Storm. You want to go back to Heroes Lounge? Because that's how you end up back in Heroes Lounge. I like Heroes Lounge. I like Heroes Lounge, too. Yeah. What well, says in Heroes Lounge? <laughs> I hate Perfect oh, timing! <laughs> Nexus Gaming Series, thank you for the raid. And I hope you guys had a wonderful time with the Storm Division. Fingers crossed that uh, the I Fool's Band Gambit got their first uh, win there. So we're almost ready. We're just waiting on one from TSRG. And since we have so many new friends who are joining us, why don't we head once again over to the map screen? 
So Absolutely. as you guys can see, we are in game number two of our best of three series. The first game of the evening was Braxis Holdout. It was picked by Bloodbath and Beyond, was won by Team Rainbow Strike Go. Team Rainbow Strike Go have picked Cursed Hollow, and we're just waiting for them to, uh, okay, Silver is in. They have the captain. Nice. So we should, we should be starting here with the draft in a moment. You all missed a very fun combo composition with a black hole uh, Tassadar with a Taunt Garrosh, Light Bomb Anduin, and not a Gravo Bob Gazlo. It was a Punching Gazlo all on the same <laughs> team, which proceeded to do insane amounts of damage. They also had a Wailing Arrow Sylvanas, but it did not win with, as we can already see, TSRG taking game number one as we are heading into game number two. Cursed Hollow is our map. And Bloodbath and Beyond have opted for first pick. I'm super excited for this. I really hope this is just as fun as game number. Yeah, that's fair. That's really fair. Six absolutely <laughs> spanked on that foul set. And I think all of those heroes are still at 100% win right now there, except they for are. Lucio. 50% uh, win rate. Hooray. Yay. <laughs> Watched a few NGS games on Twitch, and I have to say this casting is top class. Aw, thank you. Deli Hands Andy, that's a great name. Hell yeah. Gaslow has or another it's... alt. <laughs> or it's Jelly Hand Sandy. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> so, well, no, the absolute love of my life. Hello, friend. Murden going to be banned out. Sukov once again taken out of the mix. Let's turn and start to bring our attention back to the draft. And then the respect ban on a punk rock pirate as the Chromie will finally be taken out. What are we going to see for first pick here, Tesher? Maybe fight if we're going by If we go by statistics, Anduin has still been their highest priority pick, played in five of their previous nine games. So they very much like the Anduin. Second highest in terms of supports is Stukov, who has also been removed. After that, we are going quite far down to Lili, which is their third highest picked healer. It's going to be May this time coming out. We saw her band away in game number one, but this time she is let through. So polite game. We're going to go ahead and pick that up. And I think we're understanding where that respect band comes in from that first game. So maybe they'll mix it up a little bit. This can lead to a more aggressive play. If they do opt to go at Anduin once again, you can have May skate in and then even ice block and then go in with that light bomb. So we'll have to see. I hate people, but I love gatherings. Kalidor, thank you for the raiding party. So many raids tonight. You guys are so kind. Welcome, viewers of Kalidor. We are in game number two of our best of three series. And I hope you guys are all having a wonderful time. I hope you guys had a wonderful stream as there it is. Anduin is going to be picked up once again for Rackham. We're having such a party as we saw the Brightwing Greymane from TSRG, Team Rainbow Strike, go. Two more heroes with a 100% win rate, but only over one game for them. <laughs> as we already talked about that Anduin being the top priority for Rackham as that healer. And Sylvanas. They just like that Sylvanas. If we saw at the last game, that backline dive style. They have yet to win with Sylvanas. That backline style does have value, but I hope they are prepared to adjust into a composition like this, where they may be better off with a more defensive style of Sylvanas, still using that Might of the Banshee Queen, but comboing it with the Evasive Fire later on to try and stay further back so they don't just get pollied if they dive into a bright wing. Let's see what we're going to pick up next here. That's a very fair point. They're going to ban away the Diva, and I like the Diva ban. Mm. does allow for long contestants on the map. And currently, uh, the long team fights, I mean, there's only two heroes, but are going over to Brightwing, who is a mana-less healer who can hearth back if they run out of mana, teleport back. And we're going to see Diablo come in for silver. I'm excited to see the Diablo, just due to the fact that they were recently nerfed in that large patch we were talking about last time around. And Ragnaro, so big long fights hoping to come out of here from the side of uh, Rainbow Strike Go. Going for a long team fight as well, I mean, because Ragnaros, you know, just drags out the game. Interesting pick on the Ragnaros. I don't 
think this is a preference to, if you are in the situation where you have last pick, if you haven't picked your solo laner yet, you're usually better off leaving it till last so that you can get the counter and win the solo lane a lot harder. But in this case, we haven't ever seen Team Reaper Strike go pick the Ragnaros, but we have seen it picked three times by Blood, Bath and Beyond. I think this is an active pickup knowing that even if they get countered, they can still use this as a macro and it's a good denial from the members of Blood, Bath and Beyond to take them off one of their top heroes while still giving them insane macro potential and some good long-term fights with that Ragnaros. It's a smart pickup for them, even though it does mean that the Rollers now come in and can give them a counter. But, oh, that is so smart. Triple bruiser, double bruiser with a main tank as Sonya comes in to mix it up. So that is now a four-man me melee assassin Ragnaros as the offlaner has been given to Sonya Rag could, of course, they could always do a 3-1-1 and still make this work very well. All right, they're making my job hard here. Give me one second while we change it over. Sonia is going <laughs> to go over to Kingle. Let's bring it back yes. to us here for a second. And Ragnaros going over to Robert, which I expected, but still caught me by surprise. Uh, so actually, I guess I didn't expect it. <laughs> they waited a couple of <laughs> seconds. <laughs> so... I expected it, but I didn't. I mean, I assumed that, like, they were going to swap, and then they waited a couple of seconds. I was like, oh, it's fine, but it wasn't fine. They <laughs> did end up swapping. All righty, let's head on in to our second game here. Over on the blue side, it's going to be your friends at Bloodbath and Beyond with Rackham once again on that Anwin. Punk Rock Pirate is going to be your Lee Ming. Wraithling on the Thrall. Polite Gamer is May and Sousa once again on the Sonya. Or keep me on the Sylvanas. <laughs> and on the right, it is Team Rainbow Strike Go with Kingle on the Sonya, Silver on the Diablo, Robert on the Robert, sorry, on the Ragnaros, Sticks on Greymane, and Panda will be playing that bright wing. This is game number two. This is Cursed Hollow, and you are watching Jixie Cat on Twitch. Aw, thanks. Got a Div E bring a crazy exciting match. That's so fun. We'll have to stop by your stream and watch it later. We're having a very exciting uh, Div C match here now as well. As Finally, we're going to see a big old push onto Polite Gamer. Big stun comes out. We're going to immediately use the leap of faith to bring them back to safety. Ragnaros going for that meatball build. Already has two stacks on the shifting meteor. Gives him a little bit of an easier time into Thrall if he does get stuck in that lane. He can poke from range. And a little bit of an easier time in the off in the four man because now he can poke the objective more consistently. It's a very annoying style of build. In the meantime, Slam Sonya, classic star, which does allow her to have a pretty good time into Thrall, who did not go Rolling Thunder, which is actually the counter talent into Kingle. Instead, going with long range with Echo of the Elements. A big risk coming in here for Wraithling. We're going to look to continue to poke out, maybe looking to stall out these tributes a little bit longer as we get in later and later to the game. They already have five stacks, so go in there. Everybody else keeping roughly the same standard. We have the Aether Walker coming out from uh, uh, Li Meng, Punk Rock Pirate there, which is another favorite of them. I know a little bit about all their fantastic mage play, so... Full on teleport leaming currently and everyone right now just back to doing those camps grabbing those waves the very exciting way to start cursed hollow where you don't see the enemy until the first tribute very true you see the people who you're in lane with and then chill wraithling now stuck under towers but like you said he's stacking that echo of the elements it's gonna help him in the long term being able to poke from range never actually have to fight sonya until objectives it's a a way to deal with the aggression of slam build Sonya, and like you already mentioned it's going to give them great objective delay in the late game but they've got to be they're going to try and use it here to try and take out kingle they land the stun but panda literally just walks up spell shield and kingle's fine was a really risky, very sneaky play there. Lots of damage though coming in from May. Had to pop the cryo freeze. The R level four. We'll see if we'll go for that reduced cooldown at the four or the more common uh, icing talent that we typically see. And there it is, going for the cold front, made popular by Rhett on the May there. Both the night camps being taken out. We're gonna find a big push on the light gamer thanks to Silver, but it seems to be mostly posturing and clearing of the lands at this time. 
that may that may build combined with an Anduin light bomb style was utilized to great effect by One Direction in Storm Division. So let's see if this can be mirrored by the side of Bloodbath and Beyond as they try try to get onto May. Not enough damage to finish the job yet. King got a little bit too low. They can't afford to stay. Silver will get stunned and rooted. They overlap those, but it's still enough damage to finish the kill. And the slow from the Snowblind off Light Gamer guarantees the kill on Greymane as well. Double kill at this early stage of the game for Blood Bath and Beyond as the first tribute spawns in. Kingle has absolutely no chill there. This is going to be the first objective <laughs> going over to the side of Bloodbath and Beyond. They're able to pick it up. Robert wasn't there for the fight, had to back away, and cannot contest this first objective. Level 7, though, still going to be online. Uh, actually, it's going to be online first here for Bloodbath and Beyond. They're able to get just a couple more stacks. Brightwing looking to just soak away there as well. Far Diablo getting one of those weird Diablo bugs we always see anytime they're stopped from doing that full on combo. Again. Are they able to catch anyone out where they would near the gate there? No objective is up, so there's absolutely no reason to fight the enemy team currently. They're just going to poke each other out to the best of their ability so far. Objective will spawn. Just a couple of seconds here, but uh, for now, you know, first of all, kind of spooky, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, scared me. All right, we're going to see a gag on to top blade. Wraithling needs to be very careful where he stands. He's playing safe near the towers. Exactly what he needs to do. Going to grab the fountain. If he comes down here, he's going to have a bad day. Kingle. Shows in lane. I don't know if Silver just did. I think he might have just stepped out the bush in time for Wraithling to see. And that will be Rumble. Rackham rolling in. Polite Gamer on the back line. Going big onto that Grey May. They turn it around and sticks. It's Focus usually the for damage from the Shadow Dagger. Not enough. And it gets in in time. But Silver is very low. Having to take all that damage to zone for sticks there. Big burst coming out from the side of Bloodbath and beyond. Ragnarok is going to be the first to go down. Rackham has to stop the channel at the last second to come in and try to help the team. They are very, very healthy. In fact, chasing all the way to Narnia practically to look for some of these other heroes. Once again, they grab that second tribute and are very close to hitting those heroic abilities. Jinxie Rose, thank you very much for the follow. Good name choice. I like the first half. <laughs> you do. I like it. As they move in, Black Arrow is burned onto the floor, but Silver playing aggressive, trying to deny it by stepping up and eating a lot of poke. Souza did mix up the build exactly as we requested before the game, going with that Lost Souls, a more long range build here. They yeah, can't afford you. to dive into a triple bruiser with Greymane and Brightwing. They will get they will get absolutely bumped. So instead, they're staying at range. Get those Shadow Daggers by Tidabanshi the Queens for spell power. Then Lost Souls. You can hit the backline for free because the damage spreads as long as you keep auto attacking. As level 10 is on the board. There's Light Bomb. It's Avalanche Jinxie. Ooh, we love to see the Avalanche and more disengage. There is a lot of big engage coming out from the side of. Uh... Uh, TSRG there, as you can see right now, Light Bomb will come out, but it doesn't matter. Rackham just exploding like a, a balloon there, just popped into oblivion. Make it to as soon as the next to go down. Wraithling is tanking it out in the earthquake, but not long for this world does end up falling just as well. They tried to dive in with Polite Gamer to zone them out. They tried to drop the disengage with the Avalanche, but they found absolutely nothing, leaving it fully open for the leap into Sulfurous Smash to completely destroy the remaining members of that fight with their healer removed. That is TSRG taking full control of this game, finally getting their first tribute, but they gain something far more valuable than the tribute here. They gain the momentum and can try and turn that into some aggressive plays if they want to. Third tribute coming up. Now, this isn't all necessary for Bloodbath and Beyond to get. They would like to stall it out, wait to come back in. They definitely can. Ooh, they might have to. Azusa's going to go down there. Was trying to find that chip damage onto the middle fort. Ends up going away there. They are still in position over on the side of Bloodbath and Beyond, looking to stall out Silver, getting quite low despite the use of that spell shield from Brightwing. Great interrupt from the meatball. Lightbomb will come out. 
but Silver is able to throw it away. There's the Sulfuris, there's the Apoc, there's the Leap. Riddling is low in the back, the first to fall here. Rackham, great spear by Kingle. Silver looking for him, knockback onto Diablo, though. May have saved the life, it's not enough. Spoodbees from Ragnaros there, and Robert is able to help Six secure the kill onto Rackham. We check the boss, but with two members down, it is going to have to be a foregone here. The second, fourth tribute is picked up. Not enough of a turn by Bloodbath to be on there with Robert, Robert stepping up very aggressively and it wants to turn into anything. They're also fighting a person down, as we already mentioned, even though this tribute would not equal curse because of Sousa, who was caught out in that middle lane trying to make a play, but was rumbled because they weren't checking their mini map enough or the teams had not called out. In this case, they were able to get some damage up to mid, and in this case, as they respawn, they will finish off top lane, but overall, they've given away a second tribute. There's a boss pushing top, top lane, so this will be a fort for a fort. This is still a little rough. There's a 13 advantage just for a little bit longer for the members of Team Rainbow Strike go, as Blight Gamer will have to back up while the team rotates in. And goes in though, that's spear on a spear. Leap comes out, there's the stun, there's the unstoppable. Are they going to be able to skate away? And it looks like that will be the case. Riker, thank you for subscribing. Five months in a row, hello friend. How are you? And while we have a little bit of a lull, I'm so sorry, I tried to do it off screen. Uh, you are popping, my dear, will you please fix that? Yes. Thank you very much. We're gonna come in. More poke coming out from the side of Team Rainbow Strike. Go Curse Bullet gonna come out onto an already very low Punk Rock Pirate. Snowball gonna find Ragnaros. We're gonna continue to fight in. Light Bomb is popped. Earthquake is bucked. Mind Control. Ragnaros dropping the Sulfurous Smash. Polite Gamer running for their life. In the back though, Styx is looking for blood. Nine health on Li Ming. She is gonna go down. Rack up the next to fall. Susa only has 200 health. Light Gamer, no health, no mana. This should be our third and final tribute going over to the side of Team Rainbow Strike Go, who will secure the first curse here. And with three members down, two of them being big, strong damage dealers and wave clear heroes, that is going to mean big trouble for the side of Bloodbath and beyond. White Gamer gets very low, is pulled out of their gate by Diablo curses. <laughs> Says Punk Rock Pirate. <laughs> How does my voice sound as we it see the camp being cleaned out? It sounds crystal clear. Thank you, my love. Wonderful. You are welcome. And we will see right now, Blood Buff and Beyond, welcome to clear out this camp and start dealing with this massive wave push that TSRG have sent their way. But front wall will go down. Top four, the last remaining four will go down as mid is killed off simultaneously. Level 16 advantage, a two level lead as 14 is just about to be hit for Blood Buff and Beyond in favor of Team Rainbow Strike Go. They creep further and further ahead with every single objective and every single fight they take as we see this boss being taken away. Gonna continue to just put the pressure on with only 10 seconds left and all the lanes pushing drastically in favor of the red team. There isn't much left for them to do with the rest of this curse. So we'll just look to continue to keep the pressure on. Gingy Max, thank you very much for the subscription with your Twitch Prime two months. Welcome back to the Undead Army. Now, no 16s online, lots of chores to be done for the members of Bloodbath and Beyond. Going to look to try and push in this top lane with the boss. See how the rest of the members of Bloodbath and Beyond are going to react to it. Do they try to come up and contest, or are they just going to let this keep go? You see quite a few members move again. In fact, the full five man making their way up here, but this boss has not even been touched yet. They begin working away. Silver looking to see if they want to push in further. Good route from Adwin, but they can't chase further because they have killed this boss. Rack just finished his quest. Apoc is dropped. Polymorph punishing Sousa. Exactly what we what we talked about earlier, where they can't afford to step up into the enemy team because that will happen. With that, the boss takes out the keeper. We're going to see the full retreat out of the members of Blood Bath and Beyond. As Molten Core is dropped, Light Bomb into Boss Study, just sidesteps in time. Boss is on the core, Molten Core dealing a big chunk of damage there. That shield is falling fast. Team is trying to defend. Leap will kill May though. Punk Rock Pirate really trying to focus on the boss. 69% on the core. Nice, 70, 50. We could be looking at the beginning of the end. Kingle is low, does go down. That's a reset for Li Ming. 20%, but there are still four very healthy members. And that's going to be it. Game number two and the series goes to Team Rainbow Strike Go. GG.
Team Rainbow Strike Go closing that out there very convincingly with a very solid game at number two able to just gain that advantage early and they just snowballed it they were able to catch Souza in that mid lane and by the time they got that they were able to get their second tribute and that gave them the momentum they needed to grab that curse take out every four that passive xp over time gave them full freedom to get that top boss and then they just very quickly ran it straight in got the key and because they were able to get that zoning with Silver's Apocalypse and force out that mistake, we did see TSRG able to guarantee victory in that game at number two. And with that, with those points, they have taken first place with 12 points in Division C West. Very well played. Solid pickups in the early game. And then in the mid and late game, just consistently fighting those picks, never allowing Bloodbath and Beyond to fight as a five-man, never allowing them to really step out onto the map, past their keeps even at some point. So very nicely done for them. We'll take a look at these stats, some of these talents. I hope you feel better, Riker. Thanks so much for stopping by. GG's and well played to the teams tonight. 5 to 11 in favor of Team Rainbow Strike Go. And uh, this auto attack Diablo build was nerfed. Nobody told Silver there. But I do <laughs> I do have to say, Rackham had like a magnet on Silver with those chastises. Every time the root came out, it just connected onto him, which would be so frustrating as a tank. Yeah, Silver had a rough time, but he did the job. They were able to get some isolations. It was just single target here. Panda could have contributed to that with the Unstable Anomaly at level 4, but they actually went instead for the Dream Shot here to get that cooldown reduction. They knew they would probably have to give up the first objective or two until they were more online, with Sonya getting some of those later level talents and Rag getting stacked up. But... They tried to go for a delay strategy with Panda instead, but they were able to get momentum and instead. It just turned into a sieging tool that worked out quite well for them. <laughs> Nicely done by the team. So I'm going to bring it over to our score screen. So those of us who came in game number two can take a look at how the matches went tonight. And we are going to head over to the NGS channel to pop in with yeah. one of the members of Team Rainbow Strike Go. And then we'll call it an evening. Sounds good. I will see you over there. All right. We got Lobby 1 with Robear. Hello, my friend. Congratulations on your win. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So tell me how you're feeling after that super spicy game number one and then a pretty clean game number two. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I'm just I'm sweating bullets to make it past game one. That was a <laughs> frag fest on both sides. Holy cow. Yeah, 16 to 29 kills. So let's <laughs> no, talk right. about that a little bit. Sure. Which, which <laughs> death do you want to talk about? <laughs> well, the first thing we wanted to talk about was actually uh, your guys' draft there, just because you have a lot of 100% win rates on those heroes. I mean, Falstad, <laughs> Malfael, maybe you can help me fill in on some of the other ones, Tetcher. I don't know. Uh, and I don't know. <laughs> okay, oh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> Those Go. are hundred percent win rate characters, all of those for us? Yes. Every single one every single hero on that team one was one hundred percent win rate uh win rate except for Lucio who was zero. Oh, interesting. Well we need to bump up Lucio's win rate. I yeah, guess. he's fifty percent win know. rate now. Got it. <laughs> it's not like it's not like what were we at on core, like forty percent or something? It's not like we I mean that was a freaking close game. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it definitely was a very close game. So uh, what was your guys' strategy going in? Because you know, uh, I, I don't know how familiar you guys are with Bloodbath and Beyond, but I was in Sea West last season. We played them, and we knew they uh -huh. had an affinity for these two-lane maps and just kind of out-microing the other team. Yeah, they're uh, Bloodbath and Beyond, my goodness. They're, they're always a, a tough out, like, every single time we play them. <laughs> um, I mean, like, I'm surprised they didn't go to three. We traditionally go to three games with these guys, so just super excited just to win, number one, but... Um, I mean, we'll we'll take what we can get. I mean, I guess if those are hundred percent win rate heroes and we we barely eked it out, I mean, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> you how good they played. So <laughs> the garage play, holy crap, yeah. all that stuff was just annoying to deal with. You guys, holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, how often does Kingo get that mouth ale banned? Because oh my goodness, they all, were just... all the time. I don't know what is. <laughs> I don't know what his uh, his rate is if you were to add up the games he actually plays and the mm -hmm. games he's actually banned. I don't know. It's probably something close to like 80% or 90% or something. Yeah, it's kind of insane. 
Yeah. So we're like, hey, it's uh, open. Do we want to play it? <laughs> they're like, right, we'll go for it. Malthus, not that in the most banned heroes against you guys. The most banned hero against you is Chromie right now. Hmm. Oh, okay. Well, that's good to know. Like, I don't even do the research on ourselves. We should probably do that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> do the research on all the other teams, but I have no idea what we look like on the other side. That's <laughs> actually, you know, a good I idea. Just, can I phone a friend for you guys? Say, like, <laughs> like Tetcher, can you tell us a scoop on ourselves, please? Because I don't even know what's going on. <laughs> right. Yeah, definitely. So, uh... How did you guys really come back? Cause, you know, the early game was really rough, and they went and started bullying the top lane. Was that kind of your your decision to start going? Because after they sent Garrosh up to the top, you guys really started pushing in hard in the bottom. Yeah, I think, uh, what was it, three quick deaths at the beginning? I think yep. after we fragged, like, super <laughs> hard at the beginning, um, and Kinga was hanging on the game for us, I think it was just a matter of, like, getting our composure but i mean it was early enough that we were able to recover from our stupid mistakes which we made many <laughs> that game so <laughs> um yeah we just wanted to, to give it a good a good take and i think we the more we played against the garage and how he was picking us out um and actually the the play between me and muradin on our team we were mm -hmm. kind of having some calm challenges but we eventually figured out actually i don't know if we did i was kind of in the group a lot of times whatever <laughs> <laughs> whatever you guys figured it out any questions about yeah. game number one Tetra before me on to game number two absolutely so you had a lot of fights where they were able to just get a very heavy wombo onto you but you guys lived through the combo and would then drop the sound barrier was this intentional as to just your own faith that you could survive through initial engages and turn the fight or was this down to lucio potentially not being in the right position or trying to stay out of the combo first and then making his way in you know um there's, there's a reason why we only have one healer on our team and we just let him do his job um you know the clumping the clumping that's something we definitely do a lot so you know that's that's pretty classic for us like clumping all together and like taking a whole bunch of stun chains but um thank goodness we got a good healer because uh i don't know what that game would look like if we didn't <laughs> so King probably also... it might have been a combination of late but then also just time calculated and trying to stay out so he can get it out i think he was trying to calculate how much damage it was taking and how much he could put out and, and save us because i think a lot of those fights, I wasn't even in them, and I was coming in late a lot of the times. So right. mm. we were just eager beavers and trying to jump on whatever, I guess. <laughs> Makes sense. So Kingle did end up in a position where he did start to struggle in those 1v1s versus the Gazlo when the Robo Goblin came out. Did you guys <laughs> adjust your strategy when that started coming in? Um, let me see. How many times did Kingle die in game one? Anyone know? I don't think he died much, like maybe once or twice. Never in the 1v1, but it was a situation where he immediately started losing the fights when he took them, and you sent Falstad up a lot more often <laughs> after that. <laughs> yeah, I think it, I don't know if it was so much, uh, hey, we're going to adjust, like you make it sound so professional, Tetra. I appreciate that idea. <laughs> I think it was more like, a, oh, I guess Malfield's dead. Someone's got to cover the lane now. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Not, nothing nothing really calculated on that one it's just like hey there's a dead guy let's go cover his lane and, and he's range he might be able to handle him a little bit better so <laughs> all right and uh the, la the last question for game number one for me at least is um do you guys have a leash on sticks at all when it comes to flying gusts is that communication or is he just telling you it's happening and you nope. have no say at all oh yeah totally he's just i'm, I'm <laughs> flying i'm gusting and we're just like okay let's see what we can make happen right now he's uh six is six is a loose cannon i think the more you watch him he's just kind of like we i think we've had to extend his leash like by two or three times over the course of the seasons um, just to kind of let him do his thing, but it's like a double-edged sword, right? Some some games he'll get twelve get uh, twelve kills and one death, and sometimes it'll be flipped. He'll get twelve deaths and one kill. So <laughs> kind of just take it with a grain of salt on that, right? It just worked out in our favor. <laughs> well, it worked out tonight. All right, so you guys had, you know, for a pretty spicy game number one. I presume yeah. you took a, a big deep breath and then came back for game number two. You picked Curse Hollow. Is that something that's super comfortable for you guys? You can try to really uh, flex that macro pressure. How come you guys went to Curse? It, it kind of depends on the team. I think with them, um, they've historically haven't done as well on Curse. They've had really good success this season. So mm -hmm. it was kind of a toss up between that and a couple other maps, but we just decided on that. Uh, we usually feel pretty strong on it, but a lot of times it just depends on who we play. Um, but yeah, so we just kind of went with that. It was one of the top three priorities and it just worked out for us for sure. 
Definitely. Now you guys picked the Ragnaros. So was that a snatch <laughs> pick? Because they like to play Ragnaros a lot as well. Oh, you know what? Uh, maybe I should really hire you guys to do the, uh, <laughs> the scouting because I didn't pick that up last time. <laughs> but uh, no, it was uh, it was kind of something like we just needed wave clear. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we kind of wanted to run a, a beefier front line. Um, not that Rag was in the front that much because I was piloting him and I'm like afraid of getting hit in the face. But um, <laughs> but at the same time, I think it just kind of worked out. It's It just helps with our wave clear and uh, we wanted to kind of get um, take a look at what the smash looked like in league play and um, I think I got it like once, maybe. So I need some work, clearly. Yeah. <laughs> but this I is mean... your first time playing Rag in the season, am I right? Or are the stats not up to date? Uh, this is our first time playing Rag ever? Yes, this season. Well, you know, you guys have two to zero on me, so I will just defer to you guys on that. Be it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it possibly might be, actually. <laughs> Surprise, guys, we play Rag. I don't know who else doesn't in like gold league which is where i currently reside but okay. <laughs> i don't i don't know if robert is like galaxy brain flexing on us so we don't they don't give away all their team strats <laughs> uh <laughs> i don't know don't tell him the secret don't tell him the secret oh uh, you know, yeah you know he he, he doesn't we, we just show yeah. up to play the games i mean i show up to play the games and i'm a captain i gotta ping for my team today they're like you have to report that match from thursday i was like oh you are correct in that so uh, but you guys oh, played... admin duties. <laughs> you guys played an absolutely stellar game number two are you worried at all about any of the picks anything that came through because early on you know especially susa and that sylvanas they were constantly getting away the chip damage yeah did you see that one play where uh Sousa came in the back line and like annihilated three of us yeah the game one yeah I'm, I'm glad you guys framed <laughs> that and maybe you guys replayed that so we can watch it and use this as motivation be like hey guys we suck look at this game she took us out all three of us at the same time um actually uh that was something that i didn't notice so Sousa didn't play that all this year i don't know why i don't know if uh, Sousa's just busy but um, played really great, and um, we weren't expecting her or her or him. I don't know who it is, but <laughs> them. Oh <laughs> um, uh -huh. uh, yeah, but expecting them to like actually show up, and then um, when they did, just to play that Savannah's play the way they did, um, yeah. it was super super exciting to watch. If I wasn't being killed, but um, <laughs> definitely uh, <laughs> definitely a good play <laughs> on Savannah's for sure. Definitely. All right. Any questions from you, Tetcher? I do want to expand a little bit on this Ragnaros. You picked it up in the two, in the two two, um, uh, leaving yourself in a situation where you had that third pick open. Was the intention always to last pick a second front, a third front line, a second bruiser in this case, in the form of the Sonya, and swap that to Kingle and put the rag on you, or was there the flexibility of seeing what they picked first and then giving the uh, sticking with the Ragnaros as an off lane and picking a second range? Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't a hard. Strat. I think um, we worked a lot in the off season with our draft and just our character pools. And um, traditionally, I would just play, like personally, me as an example, I'd play a lot of this range characters, range mages is what I traditionally would do if, mm -hmm. if you like dig into the research. Uh, this season, we or in the off season too, we kind of tried, and uh, I think um, just having me flex on to certain roles that kind of frees up Kingo because he's pretty damn good. I don't know if you guys knew, but Kingo good. Um, and he has a huge hero pool too. So instead of like keeping ourselves stuck, so we're just trying to broaden our hero pool and our our dynamic. Um, you know, that was just the coaching and that we we kind of got over the uh, off season. But but just really trying to open it up instead of trying to force ourselves and to play characters that we're okay at when we when we really know that there's people on our team that can play it exceptionally well. So um, you know. Gosh, I'm probably like the worst type player on the team, so they're just <laughs> me on their back, which is good because I'm six six in real life, so there's a lot of me to carry. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, it, it does open up uh, uh, open us up a lot of flexibility. So we're we're stretching our wings this season, which we're excited to see. Yeah, well, it paid off well. You guys did an absolutely fantastic job. I will leave the uh, the floor to you now, my dear, for any shout outs, call outs you want to say within reason. The floor is yours. Yeah, awesome. Well, first off, I'd just like to, to thank our team for putting in the work. I mean, the off season, they grumbled at me when uh, we got a coach and put in some work, but <laughs> we're paying some dividends for us. 
Um, definitely want to give a shout out uh, to to Bloodbath and Beyond. I mean, it seems like every time we play them, they're true to their name. It is a Bloodbath every time. <laughs> um, love the competition I get them. They're a great group of guys. I uh, definitely want to give a shout out to you guys. Uh, one caster was fantastic. Two of this caliber, <laughs> like in my dreaming right now. Holy cow. <laughs> Cannot believe this, guys. I'm kind. geeking out. You're so sweet. <laughs> this, Thank this you. This talent around me. This is amazing. <laughs> uh, but, but seriously, though, thanks to you for casting. Put us on the stage just to go back and watch it and just have fun with our with our friends and family. Um, definitely want to get a shout out to, to NGS mm -hmm. and um, for everything they do just put on the stage for all of our players i mean i'm hoping that it keeps growing and growing and gosh maybe it ends up being like some kind of like amateur slash semi which i guess it is kind of for cco right because it was yeah. kind of already that before so yeah. hopefully it'll grow bigger and better and we'll have more divisions to climb <laughs> uh definitely want to give a, a shout out to our sister team the knights they've definitely been helping us practice and prepare for the season even though they're in Div D, hopefully they're. Mm -hmm. I actually have seen they've been putting in some work there, which we're excited to see. Yeah. And uh, last shout out is, um, you know, just really to the people out there making a difference. I'm, you know, we're still in a pandemic right now. And even though I, some of us are getting vaccines, not everyone's there yet. So mm -hmm. everyone stay safe, healthy, you know, make good choices. You know, you can still carry it if you get it, just even if you've uh, beat it. So just mm -hmm. be careful, people. And uh, be successful. Everyone be successful. <laughs> that's it that's all i got well thank you so very much robert for stopping in and chatting with us congratulations on your win you go ahead and go celebrate with your team have a wonderful evening and we'll talk to you later already all right thanks a lot for casting appreciate it yeah see you friend see ya Bye. Bye. all right my dear let me go ahead and give you a call back we'll talk about where tatcher is when he's not here and then in my house. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 we'll uh, we'll call it an evening. So let's get them back. It's me. There I'm he is. Uh, All righty. Now let's get him back on the stream. So you guys weren't looking at my ugly Discord and, and seeing all of the. I was gonna see all the stuff that I post when I'm not. There he is. Uh, on camera, I don't really post anything. Most of the time, it's me and Tetra <laughs> just sending each other like stupid memes. Um, <laughs> so, my sweet, absolutely fun series. What a wonderful team! Robert is such a sweetie. Where can people find you when they're not here with when you're not when you're not here with me? You can find me on Twitch.tv, YouTube.com, and Twitter.com. All at Tetra. T E T C H E R, spelt like uh, hang on, I'm bringing up the thing so I won't point the right way. Never mind, screen's not being shared. I'm gonna guess that way. Uh, you can see it's spelt there. You can find me on all the things uh, under that name. I do a lot of casting. I make some shows and do a little bit of writing from time to time to make uh, some comedy things. So you can enjoy those. I actually have two casts tomorrow. I am casting uh, a for NGS on my own channel, starting a. Oh man, I'm going to mess up these time zones. I'm just going to do British time. Uh, starting at 1.30 a.m. British time, I will be casting a replay of... That's 5.30 Pacific, friends, and then at 8.30 Eastern. Yes, I'll be casting uh, Phoenix Rising Ruby versus Bronze 6, and then I will be casting uh, the Red Share... Uh, I'll be casting Lowered Expectations versus waiting on Cherry a little bit after that at 3.30 at GMT. So one hour, so that is 7.30. Yes. Um, nice, yeah. but I'll be casting those, so check those out. And if, all my VODs are on YouTube. Uh, subscribe, new emotes on my channel, and subscribe here, because Crogthus is one of my favorite emotes. Uh, <laughs> do those things. Oh, well, thank you very much. Thanks so much, everybody, for watching. Reminder, I'm Jinxie Cat. You can find me here most days, unless you're on my YouTube. Which, please watch my YouTube, please. It's really funny. Yeah. Like, maybe it's I'm hilarious. being biased. We just had a new video that released yesterday, uh, and that's YouTube. You just search Jinxie Cat, spelt just like down here. It comes up uh, on, you know, just, just uh all, all my casting videos are there so if you need to dig up any dirt on your opponent then you can check all of those out 
Uh, again, my memes are hilarious. I like to think. And we, we have some other fun stuff on there. So thank you guys. Please, please, if you like what you see, then don't forget to drop some of those subscriptions or those bids. But, you know, if you can't do that, donating monetarily, it's really hard right now. Then we just love to have you guys hanging out and chatting and chat. You know, just post a smiley face every 5, 10, you know, 30 minutes, whatever. Just, just throw the stream up on mute. Uh, we appreciate it. You guys are the best. Have a wonderful evening, friends. Please stay safe. Go check out Tetcher tomorrow at tits.tv forward slash Tetcher. Have a wonderful evening. I'm going to send you all over to funds. We'll see you later, friends. Bye-bye.